Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity Endless Runner tutorial series where we're looking at all the bases you need to make your own awesome and fun endless running game. Uh, so last time out, we showed how to start randomizing our platforms. Um, and in the future, we're going to add some different kinds of platforms, but for now, we're just stuck with um, sorting them out into various different sizes and stuff like that. So what we're going to do, what we need to do now is we just set up the basics of randomizing our platforms and setting them up in a way without using our object pooling system that we created before and we also discussed that they're they're spawning too close together look look at those two there they're touching each other we don't want that happening we don't want our platforms touching each other they could be making all kind of crazy platform babies who knows we don't want that happening so what we're going to do is first we're going to set up, set up uh, our system to work with our object pooling system uh, that we set up in a previous episode. So we're going to go back into our platform generator and the main thing is now rather than selecting our platforms based on this uh, our array of platforms that we used before what we're going to use is an array of object pools rather than an array of platforms. So what we're going to do we're just going to comment this bit out the bit that looks at the platforms because we're not going to use that anymore and it'll be helpful because now in our in the rest of our scripts um, they should be turning red where where it's trying to use the platform but for some reason it's not okay there we go I just had to restart it now you can see if I comment this little bit out here all these places where we're referencing that platforms uh, array have now turned red so now we know that those are the places that we're going to need to change with our object pools so we're going to create a new array of our object poolers. So here we've commented out the previous object pool. I'm saying object pool an, an awful lot. Uh, but here we commented out what we had used before. So we're going to put that back in. And we're going to make it an array by putting some square brackets after it. And now, essentially, the main thing we need to do is just specifically look at or to put in our object pool. And we're going to change that to object pools put in our object pools instead of our the platforms. So here, and in our platform widths, uh, again, we need to set it up to the same length as however many object pools we have. So we're going to set change this to the object pools. And the same here, we'll do the exact same thing. We're just going to copy this so we're able to do it a little bit quicker. So pop that there, we're still just getting the length of that. And the only slight difference here because obviously our object pool specifically won't have um, a get component or it won't have a box collider or anything like that. We need to get the object within our object pool that we're going to be generating. So if we go back into Unity and just open up our object pool script or object pooler script and we have a look at it here. So what we used in this script to refer to that item that we'd be creating. That what we called that was pooled object. So what we need to do is, back in here, let's put a space there. So we'll paste in again the object pools uh, and we're going to be referencing a certain number in the object pool. So we'll be using the i again. So as it's looping true, it'll be going the, the zero point in the object pool, the first point, the second point, etc. Uh, and rather than just doing get component on that we're going to get the component of the pooled object so we'll say the object pools dot pooled object uh, and then we can delete this little bit about the platforms and just like that say so, so now we have with we are able to get the component of that object and get the size and the x value of it so perfect so the next thing we need to do is uh, we've got our platform selector and that's going from zero to the length of our platforms array but we're not using that anymore so we need the length of our object pools array which is perfect and then finally we have instantiate here and as we know we're not using instantiate for creating our objects because we, we've got this whole object pooling system so we're just going to comment that out and not use that at all and we're going to bring back in the original system we had for our object pool which is down here and since we're not using just one single object pool anymore we're going to put an S on there and we're going to 
access our array of objects and the particular one we're going to access from our array is using our platform selector value so we're going to pop that in there platform so, oh sorry you can't see that well if I spelt it right it'd be nice too platform selector like that and now it knows where to look in the array just like it knew where to look for our single individual platforms now it knows where to look in our object pool and it's able to call from that object pool that we've selected it's able to get a pooled object from there and as we know from oh, we can convert them save by saving uh, we say, or save that and then had to convert it sometimes you do uh, and as we know from our platform destroyer script all that does is deactivate objects so we don't actually have to make any changes there in to do with our random pools or anything like that so now back on our platform generator here rather than just being linked straight to the, the prefab objects now we're going to have to create a series of object pools uh, we've got one already for our seven by one so we're just we're going to create a new an empty object here and we're going to call this object pools just so we have a way to easily sort all these so we'll copy that one in there and we'll create some duplicates just like that and say on one here we're going to go to our prefabs actually just so they're all kind of sensible in order we go to the first one and we'll drag the three by one in there the second one we'll drag the five by one in and the final one we'll drag the nine by one in and now we can select how much pooled amount we're going to use by default we'll just leave it at two because it'll create some extra ones for us and you never know it might not for a while we might not even need more than two objects that could keep generating and switching between different variables so now that we have our four different object pools here and each one looks at a specific prefab if we go back to our generator we can drag the four of them onto our object pools array here so we'll drag them in we can drag them in one by one but for example if we wanted to drag a bunch of them together we could try highlight them but then we lose we don't see the script here anymore but if we go back again to our platform generator and hit this little lock symbol up here what that does is no matter what other item you click on it still keeps showing up the whatever components are attached to our platform generator because that's the one we locked so now we're free to go highlight them highlight the three of them together and we just drag three of them over pop them on object pools and see they all get added straight in so then we'll unlock that just in case we want to do some other stuff so now we should see if we start the game start playing here as long as it works okay if we jump yep so we've got our duplicates made it's creating a few extra ones because it needs to uh, I should stop soon yeah there we go so now it's got, it made a few extra sevens uh, for some reason they were the ones that were randomly selected the most it's made a few extra tree net trees now as you can see it's all kind of generating along nicely and things are being recycled just the way we want to and it's been everything's kind of appearing nicely and going along for the moment it looks like our gaps are being relatively okay but we're, we discussed last time we could end up with an issue where an object gets too close as we saw at the start of the episode some of the objects can end up touching each other because what's happening is if we go back to our script we've got our we've got all our platform widths all set up perfectly that's all working grand but on our transform position what we're doing is taking the current position and adding on the the platform width of a selected item so say we stop the, our, our previous piece is a, a nine by one so it's really wide and the transform position after it's created the object it stays right in the middle of that one and then say say for example our distance between randomly picks picks only one so it only moves over a tiny little bit it's still within the nine block piece and then our our random selector picks a three by one platform so what it does is it'll add on the platform width so it'll move it over another three spaces but it's still kind of it'll just be at the end of the nine piece then and then it will create our new three by one and the end of it will be in the previous piece and we'd have these overlapping pieces and it would create some odd situations it wouldn't really work for us so instead of doing that what we're going to say is we're not just going to add on the platform width we're going to add on half 
of the platform width here. So if we put some brackets around this and just go inside the bracket and say divide by two. So what we're going to do is we're going as a new object is selected, we're going to move uh, half a platform along uh, and pick our points. Uh, because just as a demonstration, actually, we'll go back in here and we'll return back to the start here. So at the moment, uh, our platform generator starts off right in the middle of this platform. But what we're going to do now is instead of starting right in the middle of it, we're going to set it to start right at the end here. So then when we add on, add on half a platform, so say the three by one platform is selected, if we add on half of it, it'll go to about here and then it'll generate the platform. So automatically we'll have no matter what, it can only ever be touching the platform. If our distance between was set to zero, then we, our platform would only ever go to there and it wouldn't overlap. But then we'll end up in a situation where now our point is halfway in the middle of our block and then the next object gets added on and it could only go to there. So what we're going to do is after our object has been created, we're going to move on the other half of the width. So then no matter what, once, once any platform has been created, the point will always move to the end of the platform rather than moving to rather than staying in the middle of the platform so what how the way we're going to do that is basically we're just going to copy this all this information again and paste it down below what below uh, everything being instantiated and created or well at least not created but our object pool is creating uh, and here we're not going to add on the distance between again because we don't want to double up on that all we want to do is add on the half the width to the position of where we were. So now we should see if we save this and we go back in, now that our platform generator starts off at the end of any platform. Uh, and what we're going to do just to demonstrate it, we're going to set our distance between values to both be zero. So then no matter what, our distance between will always be zero. And we're going to slow our player down a little bit so he can so we can get time to see what's going on okay so we hit play and now what we should see is all our platforms will be touching each other so the first one it wasn't exactly a hundred percent right on the dot but as you can see as it's going along all our platforms are touching exact exactly to the edge of each other none of them are overlapping or anything like that that's what we wanted to eliminate with this so if we go to our platform generator for example now and add in an extra bit of space and value, say between one and 10. Here we go, now we're starting to see some random values added in. So as you can see, we're getting some bigger gaps again. Our platforms are appear appearing a bit more, obviously. Uh, our player is able to jump up and down and we've got some big gaps going on. Not, he's, he's still moving a little bit too slow to handle those things. Let's speed him back up again. He's a bit of a slow guy going along here. 7 to 10. Now we can jump along and run and jump over stuff. So there you go. That's how to uh, kind of make sure our platforms aren't overlapping with each other or anything like that. And how to reintegrate our object pooling system with these new platforms that we've created. So I'm going to wrap up this episode here. And next time we're going to take a look at how to adjust the heights of this platform. And we're also... Depending on how long that takes in that episode, we might also take a look at uh, making our player not jump the exact same every time. So at the moment, no matter whether you just tap, jump, or hold jump for a little while, he jumps the exact same height every time. So what we want to do is add a little bit more strategy to the player so he can, if you just barely tap it, he'll only jump a little bit. And if you hold it down, he'll jump a little bit longer. So we're going to take a look at that and we're going to take a look at moving these platforms up. And of course, there's plenty, plenty more to come to making this a fully fledged game and making it as much fun as it can possibly be. Once we have these basic mechanics out of the way, then we can start adding in things like score systems and resetting levels, saving high scores, getting bonuses, power ups and stuff like that. So yeah, thanks for watching everybody. I will return soon with more platforming goodness for you all in endless runner land. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, see you all very soon.
Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page, where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.